Up to this point, we have now determined and been able to calculate both the shape of the lens and the power of the lens to correct for myopia and hyperopia. While the shape of the lens is different from the point of view of the myope as a concave lens and the hyperope is using a convex lens, concave cutting in, convex turning out, those two lenses are still of fundamentally the same type. And what I mean by type is that they are spheres. They are known as a spherical lens. You know what a sphere is. You have them in your daily life. Two common examples would be a baseball or a basketball. Now, if I took a baseball or a basketball and threw it to you and said, hold it upright, you wouldn't really know what I meant. Because no matter how you hold that basketball or that baseball, in terms of its shape, forgetting its writing and maybe some lines that are on it, it really is the same. It has the same orientation, it has the same perspective, no matter how I turn that baseball or basketball, because it is a sphere. We are now going to talk about um, uh, uh, correcting for astigmatism. And as you may recall, we talked about astigmatism as having more than one focal point, multiple points of focus. And to correct for astigmatism, we need to use what is known as a cylindrical lens, because we only want to correct for the astigmatism at least, along one axis or one degree. So if I took, well, think of an example of a, of a cylinder. If I took a, um, a football and gave it to you and said, hold the football upright, I think that most, if not all of you, would take that football and you'd put it from 12 to 6 with the pointy ends up and down. Then if I said, hold it horizontal, you would hold it with the pointy ends between 3 and 6 o'clock. A football has an orientation, has a, a definite sense of direction to it. And the th same thing is true for the correction of astigmatism it, with this cylindrical lens, because astigmatism has one axis that we need to deal with. So if we look at this prescription, what we have here is for our right eye, we have plus one. And just stop there. Right eye is plus one. That means that that eye is hyperopic of plus one, that is a 59 diopter eye in the right. We know that. In our left eye, we've got plus 1.5. Again, plus sign indicates hyperopic eye, one and a half diopters of a hyperopic eye, that is a 58 and a half diopter eye, 58.5, when that person takes its glasses off. So if we block off all this other stuff and just deal with the sign and the first set of numbers, we we know that information. We have low amount of hyperopia, and we can calculate how much hyperopia, in fact, this individual has. It's the next set of numbers that are new to us and, quite frankly, at times get confusing. This next set of numbers, if you see the X, always indicates that this person has astigmatism in addition to their hyperopia or their myopia. Now, Here's the amount of astigmatism, minus 0.5, which is half of a diopter. And the X stands for axis, axis 130. And you can think of the axis as being the football. I'm going to hold the football at the 130th axis, because that is the only orientation in which I want to have this astigmatism correction. Over the entire eye, we have our spherical plus 1 correction, the basketball, the baseball, has the same shape, no matter how you turn it, it has the same orientation. So the entire eye is corrected of a plus one of hyperopia. But on the 130th axis, we have a minus half a diopter. So we have the football orientation at 130th axis, and on that axis only, that person would have minus 0.5, well minus 0.5 from this plus one, if you do the simple math, some um, minus 0.5. Now we go to our left eye. We already know the amount of correction for the um, uh, hyperopia. And here we have the axis of 50. And we have two and two, two and a quarter diopters of astigmatism. So this person has a lot of astigmatism at the 50th axis. So only on the 50th axis will there be um, an astigmatism correction. If you know someone that has astigmatism correction in their glasses and you look through them 
what will happen is if I took my glasses right now and kind of looked at the distance, I'm looking at the TV camera, and I'm just turning my glasses around their axis. And what happens is that the screen looks like it's pulling apart. It kind of looks like silly putty. Or if you've ever been to um, the um, an amusement park and you step in front of some of these funny mirrors where one makes you look really tall and slender, the other one makes you look short and fat, or you know they do different things to your body shape. That's exactly what an astigmatic or an astigmatism correction looks like in a pair of eyeglasses. So let's practice just a couple of more of those to see if you if you have it. So I'm going to say in the right eye, this person has minus 2.25. I'm going to say in the left eye, this person has minus 2.50, minus 1.25x020. So what do we have here? We've got our right eye with a person who's a myope, that's the minus sign. How much? 2.25 diopters. Nothing else is written there? That person does not have astigmatism in their right eye. We go to our left eye. This person has a minus. They're a myopia. They've got too much bending power. 2.5 diopters of myopia. And because we see our X with all the other numbers, they have a one and a quarter diopters of astigmatism. Where? At the 20th axis. So if you really want to complete the loop, what would be some of the... Let's take our right eye. Let's do the shapes of the lenses. And this is nothing new. This is simply all practice for you. First is minus 2.25. That gets them to 60. So their eye, in fact, is 62.25 diopters. They need a minus lens, which is a concave lens of 2.25 diopters. And that forces the image back to the eye. For the left eye, we would simply adjust this by half a diopter. And we're going, for the purposes of our drawings, because it's just too complicated, we will not be putting in a drawing for um, the astigmatism correction in that particular sense. So at this point, you should be able to um, read a prescription, be able to pick it up, be able to analyze it, and calculate and draw a picture of the types of diopters it has, and be able to add the prescription for the astigmatism. The last thing I want to do here is I want to talk about some specific formulas. I'm going to ask you to write these down, and we will then do some you know, hand drawings of, of doing some calculations with these. FD it stands for focal distance, and in small parentheses I have um, uh, F, I have centimeters. CM stands for centimeters, and we're going to be doing this work in centimeters because centimeters is a lot easier than inches. The focal distance in centimeters is equal to 100, which is a constant, divided by D. And you get to guess what D is, and hopefully you're going to guess that D stands for diopters. So the focal distance in centimeters equals 100 divided by D. Now we can flip that formula pretty easily and say that diopters is equal to 100 divided by the focal distance in centimeters. And the last formula I have up there is that 4 diopters equals X. So if you write those formulas down, I'm now going to show you how we can apply those formulas. Let's begin by saying that you have a person who has a pair of reading glasses, and you see that those reading glasses have a value of 10 diopters. That's how powerful those reading glasses are. So the question will be, where do those reading glasses focus? So we have our FD in centimeters equal to 100 divided by D. So all we have to do is take this D, which is 10. 100 divided by 10 gives us our focal distance in centimeters. That equals 10. So if you have a lens with a value of 10 diopters, its focal distance will be 10 centimeters. Now, if you pick up most rollers these days, you'll be able to easily look at centimeters and see what the distance is. If you're someone who says, hey, I want to work in inches, then you take these centimeters, and there are 2.5 centimeters per inch. 
So you simply divide 2.5 into 10 centimeters, and it gives you um, 4 inches. It really is easier, though, to deal in centimeters, and I encourage you to do that. So just practicing a little bit more, and I'll have some of these for you on the uh, in your homework for the website. If you have something with a dioptric value of 20 diopters, you want to know what is its focal distance. You take that 20, and you divide it into 100, and you come up with 5 centimeters. That 20 diopter lens will focus at 5 centimeters. Now, we can flip this. We can say that we have a pair of glasses, but we don't know what their power are. We can take that pair of glasses and we can put them on and we can measure its distance. And I'll be showing you how to do this in our laboratory when we get together in May. And we can find out that the focal distance for that in centimeters is, say, 16 centimeters. So we take D and we want to calculate for diopters because we now have a lens that we've measured as being 16 diop excuse me 16 centimeters as its focal distance so we divide 100 by 16 and that gives us roughly uh, I should have done this in advance Oh, it gives us roughly, um, just a second here, actually I, give me one I didn't want to give you this early, but since we're here we're going to do it anyways. Yes, it's six, roughly. The exact answer is 6.25, but we're going to live with 6. Okay, so that 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 is its 6 diopters. Okay, let me give you another one. This is something that has a focal distance of 5 centimeters. So we take our Ds, we divide that by 5 centimeters. We're going to divide it by 5 is 20. So we've got 20 diopters with a 5 centimeter focal distance. Okay? Now, if I said to you, you've got a 6, a, 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 a um, we have 20 diopter lens, that wouldn't mean anything to you. And that doesn't mean anything to your clients either. But, we know that there are 4 diopters in every X, which is power. So, we can take 20 and divide it by 4, and that will give us 5x. Now, if I said to you that this is a 5 times magnifier, that, in fact, would communicate quite well with you. That would give you a lot of good, useful information. So, take any diopter value, you can take 10 diopters, divide it by 4, that will give you x. So that would be 2.5x of a 10 diopter lens. Okay, take any diopter value, divide it by 4, 24 diopters, divide it by 4, that gives us 6x. So, through using this mathematics, we are able to determine what is the um, focal distance of a lens, what is the power of a lens, all by doing these really simple mathematical equations.